The Bible says at uh, verse 3, there shall be no more curse, right? In eternity, there is no more curse because remember, God put the curse at the beginning. Go back to Genesis chapter 3. It's redeeming, it's restoring Eden again. Adam and Eve's timeline again. That's what the Lord's doing in Revelation 22. All right, go to Genesis chapter 3. Remember, there was a curse upon our earth. That's why until then, life is going to be unfair, and that's what the atheist has to get in his or her head, including unbelieving Christians. There's a lot of Christians who become bitter and mad at God, and then uh, they run away. But you got to understand this is that there is a curse on our earth. People don't get that. So a lot of people, they quit believing in God. They uh, no longer believe in Jesus anymore. Why? Because uh, if uh, God is real and God's a loving Father, why did all these bad things happen? Simple, because there's a curse. It's that simple. So anything goes. Genesis chapter 3. You'll notice that the Bible says at verse 14, The Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So notice over here that the Lord, he says he's putting a curse, but it continues on with the woman. Verse, 15, uh, verse 16, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy, di thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So notice over here that the Lord, he put a, uh, he put a curse upon all of mankind, at Genesis 3. But the curse now will be gone, folks. So when will pain end? When will sorrow end? You gotta understand this, until this curse gets broken, we're in it. It cannot get broken until Revelation chapter 22. So until then, you cannot blame God. You can't say, why didn't the Lord intervene? You gotta get that out of your mind. We're living in a curse. That's what the scripture said. As a matter of fact, Pain and suffering upon this earth should not disprove the existence of God. Pain and suffering in this earth should prove more that the Bible is real. Because the Bible said that this curse has to happen. If God made everything good and pleasant to you, then He's not real. Because He'd be breaking His word and you think that the Bible is false. So that's important to understand. The next part of verse 3 says, But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. So, remember, God's throne is in New Jerusalem. Now, it says God and the Lamb, right? So, why is it uh, a single throne but with two different people? Because, remember, that talks about uh, God the Father, God, uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. These are three persons, but they're one God. So, that's why it's possible to the Lord. All right, if you keep uh, reading over here. And his servants shall serve him. Now notice over here that it says that his servants are going to be the ones that are going to be serving him. Hmm. So they serve. So his servants that will be serving him, that can obviously include everybody. So then the servants will consist. Of not just the Christian church. It will also include over here different saints. So then, for example, we can put uh, Jews over here, whether they be in the Old Testament or tribulation. So all these servants will be coming to serve him. So if we see that over here that they're coming to serve him, this brings up something interesting. Remember back at uh, Revelation 4 and 5 on what I taught you, Revelation 4 and 5, I gave you an interesting thing about who are the 24 elders, right? Now, the 24 elders, 
If we compare that, I showed you at Revelation 4 and 5, these 24 elders could be referring at Revelation 21, which is what? They got uh, 12 names of the apostles and then the 12 of the tribes of Israel. Now remember, an elder I mentioned to you at the previous teachings that's supposed to mean representative. So these are representatives of tribes of Israel and the Christian groups. And then I pointed out, so then the apostles, they can represent what? The Christians. The tribes of Israel can represent the Jews, and that's why Revelation 4, 5, all the Old Testament Jews, and then the Christian church, they can proclaim about the Lamb. The Jews proclaim about their Messiah who delivered them from Abraham's bosom, and through the blood they were able to go up. And the Christian church, they're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We're saved by that. So because of that, we can go to heaven. So then these could be the missing explanations to who are the 24 elders. So... That's all of a fresh review of what I taught you. So if that's the case that these are probably the 24 elders, this could make sense then that if New Jerusalem, it has the uh, names of not just the apostles, which are Christians, but also Jews. Remember, it's uh, 12 foundations of the apostles and then the 12 gates according to the tribes of Israel. So then, does that mean then that Jews can have access to New Jerusalem? Yes. Wait a minute. So then this brings up a confusion then, right? Wait a minute, Pastor. You said that the Gentile nations go over here, right? The new heaven. The Christian church, they go to here, New Jerusalem, right? And then the Jews, they're ruling over the earth, right? So then the question goes, well, Pastor, uh, then why is it that you can say that Jews, they can have a portion in New Jerusalem? Well, if you study mankind on their living situations, you notice this. When they're in a designated place, it's not like that they stay there and that's forever. Mankind, goes, mankind has the freedom to go everywhere but they come from a designated place. So let me give an example. For example, in, uh, uh, in Korea, not everyone is a Korean, obviously. The Koreans, they can identify this is our homeland, this is our nation, but that doesn't mean they're the only ones who are living there or staying there. There's a lot of what we call immigrants, so to speak, and different groups, different ethnicities who can stay there, reside, or immigrate over there. So you got to understand this. That's the idea. The idea is, is that New Jerusalem is identified with the Christians, okay? But then there's going to be Jews. That doesn't mean that they cannot live there or they cannot immigrate there, so to speak, or they cannot travel in there. That's important to understand. So God, he divides a portion. There's no doubt he divided it that way. He specifically said that the earth will be for the Jews. There are too many verses in major prophets. I showed you a few of it. In the book of Deuteronomy, I showed you God said that the universe was for who? The Gentiles. That's what he said. And then not only that, New Jerusalem is mentioned numerous times in Pauline epistles. That's for the Christians. And Revelation even admitted that is the bride of Christ. So it is accurate to say that New Jerusalem is identified with the Christians. Just like the Koreans can identify themselves with their homeland, Korea. But that doesn't mean that different people cannot live there. Just like that doesn't mean that different people cannot live in Korea. That's the idea. Okay, so you got to realize this. Mankind is built that way. That's just natural common sense. Mankind, it is built that way to live and travel wherever they go. Because God, he gives new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem for everybody to enjoy. Even though he designates it to people, he gives it to everybody to enjoy. Okay, let's go back. As we go back to Revelation 22, let's keep reading over here. It says that at verse 4, they shall see his face. So everyone's going to see the face of God. That will be a blessing, amen? That matches with Matthew chapter 5, 
which was a Sermon on the Mount for people who are going to see God at the Millennial Kingdom and the future. He says, uh, Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God, so to speak. Because they're going to see Him literally face to face. That's why the Sermon on the Mount is not applied to the Christian church. That is for a different dispensation. It's for the future timeline, millennium and eternity.